Bless the amazing things you have planned for me which is the best plan for my very own mini golf course. I'm building it right here in the clubhouse. I was thinking these two box lids can be the path for the ball to follow. Oh, and I can also draw a blue pond right here. This big pom-pom from my art supplies can be the ball. This cup can be the hole for the ball to go into. This wrapping paper roll can be the club. Pretty cool plan, right? Hoo, hoo. It's Ollie. Hello, Hayden. Hoo, hoo. What is this creation set up by you? Hi, Ollie. I made my very own mini golf course. Isn't this the best plan ever? It is a wonderful plan for golf. That's true. But there's someone who makes the best plans for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Oh, there you are. Look, Stormy. There's our friends. I'm Carrie the dog walker, and this is my best dog, Stormy Jane. We've been waiting for you because we want to finish the story about Joseph and God's plans for him. Are you ready for the story? <laughs> I know Stormy is. So today's true story from the Bible begins with Joseph. This is Joseph. Joseph's dad gave him a very special coat, which made some of his brothers very mad. They sent him far away to work. Then Joseph was sent to jail for something he didn't do. Do you think Joseph still trusted God, even though it was hard? Yes, he did. And God's plans for Joseph weren't finished yet. The king of Egypt named Pharaoh had a crazy dream and he didn't know what it meant. He heard that Joseph was very good at understanding dreams, so he had Joseph brought to the palace to talk to him. Joseph was happy to talk to the king about his dream. Joseph listened to Pharaoh, and God helped Joseph understand the dreams. 
Joseph told Pharaoh to save food for seven years because after that, there would be seven years where no food would grow. Pharaoh was so happy that Joseph helped him, so he put Joseph in charge. Joseph got to work saving food in Egypt for seven years. It was all part of God's plans. Let's count to seven together. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> now look, wow, Joseph saved up so much food, which is good because just like God said, the food stopped growing and everyone needed food to eat, including Joseph's family. They didn't have any food, but who saved up all the food in Egypt? Their brother, Joseph. Joseph forgave his brothers for what they did to him, and he made sure everyone in his family had food. <laughs> Yay, Joseph! Let's cheer for Joseph because he trusted God's plans for him even when it was hard. Yay, Joseph! And now, let's cheer for God because God loves us and God's plans are always best. Yay, God! Hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who has plans for you? God has plans for you. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who has plans for you? God has plans for me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. God's plans are always best. God's plans for me and you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, God's plans for Joseph were bigger than Joseph could ever imagine. That's because God's plans are always best. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I'm so glad that God has plans for me. See you next time. Bye. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11.
Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about grit, while we take a look at the story of someone who met up with a pretty unusual bonfire. Oh, and don't miss this either. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard. You know what I think is hard? What? Not using your phone. I'm not using mine right now. You're gonna get that? It could be important. <laughs> oh, it's from you. Well, cell phones can be good. Right, I mean, you might be watching us on a phone right now. Yeah. You have an invitation to play Farm Builder. Ooh. I don't have to look at my phone. You know what? Me neither. I can go longer than you without a phone. Oh, you're on. Let's do it! Yeah, I know. You know, I could be learning Spanish right now. I actually got this really awesome app. I... That might be your new game score. Sounds like a lot of new likes, doesn't it? story. Today we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. But their descendants, the Israelites, traveled to Egypt to escape starving. Over time, the Israelites were enslaved, but still, their families grew. After hundreds of years, the Hebrew people cried out to God for help. God heard them and chose an unlikely helper. A Hebrew man named Moses who had been raised in Pharaoh's palace, but ran away to live as a shepherd in Midian. Moses is where our story starts. Take it away. Greetings, everyone. There's fire, darkness, frogs, and a whole lot more in this story, so hold on tight. 
By the time our story starts, Moses was actually 80 years old. His early years in Pharaoh's palace were just a distant memory. He was living life as an ordinary shepherd until one day. Now, usually when something catches fire, it just burns up. But this bush, it didn't. It glowed like, like a flaming beacon. As Moses edged nearer, a voice called to him from the midst of the fire. Moses. Moses. Here I am. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you are standing is holy ground. Moses' hands shook as he tugged off his sandals. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have seen how my people are suffering in Egypt. So I have come down to save them. I will bring them to a good land. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. So many thoughts must have rushed through Moses' head. He had been raised in the palace by Pharaoh's daughter, but that Pharaoh had died and a new Pharaoh was in charge. Also, Moses had no idea if his own people would even accept him. But w what if the Israelites don't believe you sent me? Throw your walking stick on the ground. Okay, Moses did what he was told. Right then and there, God turned Moses' walking stick into a snake! And then back into a stick. Still, Moses was nervous. The bush continued to blaze. Lord, I, I, I'm a terrible speaker in front of people. Go. I will help you speak. Well, couldn't you send someone else? Your brother Aaron can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you. Tell him what to say. I will help both of you speak. Even though the thought of facing Pharaoh probably made him sick with fear, Moses did travel back to Egypt. Together, Aaron and Moses spoke to the Israelites. God has heard you. He will lead us out of Egypt. We just have to okay it with Pharaoh. Oh boy. Moses just probably wanted to run, but instead he made his way to the palace where he had grown up. With Aaron, he stood his ground before the new Pharaoh. Tell him, the Lord says, let my people go. Then they will hold a feast to honor me in the desert. Aaron repeated the words loudly and clearly, and Pharaoh glared down. Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Instead of releasing God's people, Pharaoh gave orders for them to work even harder. Now the Israelites were upset with Moses for making things worse. I did what you asked, and now it's just worse. You haven't saved your people at all. Pharaoh will not listen to you, so I will use my powerful hand against Egypt. I will bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Even though God performed miraculous signs through Moses and Aaron in front of Pharaoh, he still would not listen. So, the next morning, Aaron and Moses met Pharaoh down at the Nile River. Moses instructed Aaron what to say and do. The Lord has sent me to you. He says, let my people go, but you have not listened. Here is how you will know I am the Lord. Aaron raised his staff high. I will strike the water with this walking stick. The river will turn into blood. The fish will die and no one will be able to drink the water. The water? turned to dark red blood. But still, Pharaoh was stubborn. Ugh, Moses must have been just tempted to give up and go back to Midian, but God called him to speak to Pharaoh again and again. God says, let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to release God's people. And every single time, he went back on his word, even though God sent frogs followed by gnats and flies. All the Egyptians' cattle died. Ugh. Terrible sores showed up all over the Egyptians and their animals. Hail rained down, destroying crops and tearing leaves from the trees. Ugh. Locusts finished off anything the hail left behind. Then, deep darkness descended across the whole land for three days. And at last came the most awful plague of all. The oldest son of every Egyptian family died. 
only the Israelite families were saved by painting the blood of a lamb over their door frames, just as God had told them to do. When Pharaoh saw the terrible thing that had happened, he called Moses one last time. Get out of here, all of you. Just leave us alone, go. Moses and Aaron gathered the people together. No time to bake your bread, just uh, bring the dough along. The Israelites packed up in the middle of the night and left as quickly as they could, leading their flocks and herds. After hundreds of years, God's people were finally free. After so long, I bet they wanted to give up. Yeah, but they didn't. They kept going. They kept calling out to God. And Moses. I mean, if I were him, I definitely would have wanted to call it a day and leave. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> but Moses held on. He had seen God's presence in the burning bush, and he knew that God saw what he was going through. And the Israelites, too. So, what's our part in the story? Well, when we face tough things, right, we can know that God sees us. God will help us through, even if it's, well, not in the way we expect. Yeah, like, maybe someone keeps being mean to you at school. I mean, that's awful, but you don't have to give up. You can talk to a grown-up about it, and you can trust that God will walk with you every step of the way. Or maybe you've got something that doesn't go away, like a food allergy. Oh yeah, that's a really hard one. But instead of giving up and grumbling, you can trust that God is with you and keep going. Yeah, God never intended us to keep going on our own. So God gave us Jesus to walk with us. And when we put our trust in Jesus, He gives us the power to keep going. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on because God knows what you're going through. And that's how you grow grit. You have two game invitations waiting. Are you going to get that? Nah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. You really think you can solve that? Really I'm not you. smart enough for this. Come on, I'll show you. Oh. <laughs>
Brandon, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm training. Training for what? For the stair contest. You said that we were going to be doing a stair contest today, so I was, you know, training, climbing the stairs. Brandon, I said we were going to be doing a staring contest. Staring, like with your eyes. Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm Lawson. And I'm Brandon. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. Hey, can I ask you a question, Lawson? You just did. Can I ask you another question, Lawson? You just did. Stop that. You just, just Stop did. Stop it. Just did. Just did. Ask your question. Okay. When you think of having grit and toughness, what do you think of? Beef jerky. Okay, I'll give you that, okay? Anything else come to mind? Ooh, my Aunt Lulu. She was a tree logger, toughest person I've ever met. A tree fell on her once, and she just caught it. All right. Nothing else? Sandpaper. Cowboys. Oh yeah, uh, cowboys. Uh, That's what I meant to say right after, like my Aunt Lulu, and then there's beef jerky, and then I was gonna say cowboys, and, and then a little bit after that, there's sandpaper. Great. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Well, hello, partner. What, oh, I'm just trying to speak the lingo. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. Please tell us who you are and what you know. Well, my name is Duke Canyon, and I'm a professional cowboy. A real cowboy? Wow, I've never met one before. Why don't you just uh, tell us all the things you have to do, please? Well, you gotta get up at sunrise before the cattle call, and the hours are long, but it's, uh, it's a thankless job. Someone's gotta do it. We may be in the background, but we are important. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's, it's true, what would we do without you? You guys help create some of my most favorite things. Burgers, steaks, beef jerky. <laughs> uh, well, how many other cowboys do you usually work with? Well, it uh, depends on what we're doing. If we're in a cattle ride, uh, could be uh, 30 or 40 of us. If we're in a fight, it might be three or four of us. Or maybe 30. A, a fight? Yeah. Well, heck, we could be um, pushed off a cliff, pushed over a wagon, dragged through a river, or even dragged behind a horse. It's all part of the job. What? Yeah. Last year, I was over and over, uh, over 50 fights. Yeah. I've had bottles broke over my head. I've had uh, chairs broke over my back. I've been drugged behind a stampede of horses. It's, uh, it's all part of the job. Why would anyone want to do a job like that? Well, you don't quit the job because it gets hard. You got to keep going. You keep trying. It's all about pushing through, ain't it? Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I think it's about time for me to ride on out of here. Oh, well, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. I, uh, you headed back to your cattle now? No. As a matter of fact, the next one's going to be a, uh, a train robbery. A train robbery? Yeah. But it doesn't start filming now for another uh, two weeks, so uh, I'm going to the Bahamas. The, Baham <laughs> the Bahamas? Yeah. Filming? Yeah, I didn't tell you. Yeah. I'm an extra and a stuntman in uh, Westerns for film and television. Yeah. I didn't mention that. No. An extra? Yeah. So you mean all, all the fighting, all the bottle breaking, the cliff throwing, and, and the train robbing was only in the background of a television show? <laughs> only? Now hold on a mo. I have you both know that I've had me skull crocked, I've had me ribs broken, and I've had me teeth knocked out. And let me tell you, it was more than a few quid to get those punched back in too. Oh, sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what a quid is, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's probably the most dangerous job I know, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, uh, adios, partners. Adios, yeah, adios. Adi adi adios. adios. And, uh, thanks again. Yeah. Bye, partner. What just happened?
I don't know if I'm disappointed or if I should chase after him for an autograph. Same. Huh. It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! Hey, hey guys, um, listen, unfortunately something has come up and I can't be with you all today, but don't worry, everything's fine. And I don't wanna leave you all high and dry. So I asked my good friend Cameron and he's gonna take over for me today. All right, take it away, Cameron. Hey guys, you know, I think I've seen that cowboy in a show or two. Really? I'd say. That dude's got grit, no matter what his job is. No doubt. You got a Bible story for us? I do. It's about someone who I think has even more grit than a cowboy. Oh, and I'm gonna need your help for this story. No, no problem. problem. It's time for Human Head Puppet Theater. Our story starts with Moses. Let my people go. No, no, we haven't gotten there yet. Oh. You shall not pass! We're not there yet, either. Actually, we're not telling that part. Just hang on. All right, fine. Moses' people, the Israelites, were enslaved by the Egyptian king, Pharaoh. Moses had grown up in the Egyptian palace after being rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. Our story today starts when Moses was around 80 years old. He had long since left Egypt and was living way out in the middle of nowhere. One day... While Moses was out tending his flock of sheep, he came upon something unbelievable. Look! A bush! But this was no ordinary bush, because it was on fire, and it wasn't burning up. It's on fire, and it isn't burning up! All of a sudden, a voice called to Moses from the fire. Moses? Moses? I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have seen my people suffer in Egypt, so I have come down to save them and bring them to a good land. Okay, God, that seems like a swell idea. See ya. I am sending you to Pharaoh Whoa. to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Whoa. Me? But what if no one believes that you sent me? Throw your staff on the ground. Right. God turned Moses' staff into a snake. Wah! And then back into a staff. Well, that was weird. It was cool, but it was weird. I, I'm still a little nervous about going back to Egypt. You see, Moses didn't feel like he was the greatest public speaker or the right person for the job and wished God would send someone else. But God knew Moses had it in him, so God promised to help Moses communicate with Pharaoh. Moses' brother, Aaron, would help. God would speak to Moses. Moses would tell Aaron what God said, and Aaron would relay God's message. Before long, Aaron and Moses went to Pharaoh. The Lord said, let my people go. The Lord? Who is this you speak of, and why should I care what he says? And why is it so hot in the desert? <gasps> oh, you know what? I am not going to let your people go. Instead, I'm going to make the Israelites have to work even harder. <laughs> Man, I'm a good pharaoh. Well, as you can imagine, the Israelites were pretty mad that Moses made things worse for them. And I think it would be safe to say that Moses was pretty upset too and probably wanted to quit. But with God's help, Moses kept going. He went back to the Pharaoh by the Nile River. The Lord sent me to tell you to let my people go. But you didn't. So this is how you'll know that God ain't playing. I will strike this water with my staff and the river will turn to blood. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. Even David Copperstream could do that. The Israelites are going nowhere. <laughs> 
Pharaoh was stubborn, but Moses kept going. He went to Pharaoh again and again, and Pharaoh continued to deny the Israelites' freedom. God is gonna send frogs. Frogs? No deal. I love frog legs. They taste like chicken. Now God's gonna send gnats and flies. Ah. Come on, you can do better than that. What do you think bug spray's for? Now all the cows are gonna die. You're gonna get terrible sores. There will be hailstorms. And locusts will eat all your crops. Okay, this is getting kind of serious now. Still no. Since Pharaoh couldn't be persuaded, a darkness fell across Egypt for three days. And then the last and worst plague of all, the oldest son of every Egyptian family died. Finally, Pharaoh could not deny the power of God. Get out. After hundreds of years, God's people were finally free. But that's not the end of the story. We'll get to that next time. Great story, Cameron. Yeah, thanks for your help. Anytime. Hey, you were right, Moses had a lot of grit. He did. He kept going when things got tough, and God was with them the whole time, helping Moses know what to do and say. Well, I guess like Moses, when we go through hard times, and we will, we just have to remember that God can help lead us through. So we shouldn't give up. Exactly. Sounds like you got it. I guess I'm out of here. Gonna go watch some more westerns. Adios. Did you know Cameron spoke Spanish? I did. Reveal the question. <laughs> when have you been through a hard time? Wow, uh, this could be a lot of things. You could be having a hard time at school with someone picking on you, or maybe someone close to you has died. Yeah, or maybe you're having to deal with the consequences of a choice you made that may not have been very wise. Whatever it is, you're not alone. God knows what you're going through and doesn't want you to give up. That's right. Man, we've been through a lot today, Lawson. That's true. Anytime you can cover cowboys, a burning bush, and a singing Moses, you've done pretty well. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. That was The So-and-So Show, everybody. Goodbye. Good. Bye. This is my cowboy hat. This is my cowboy accent. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> Part partner. That's your cowboy accent. No, howdy, partner. No, howdy, partner. Ha clink, clink. What is that? Right. Clink, those are my spurs oh, there. Okay, Tell you what. All cowboys wear spurs. All right. This like, town ain't big enough not, for the both of us, no, partner. Draw, draw. All right, oh, good go. horns. Here, wrap this around. Here. Uh, all, right. Uh, all right, all right. Try to get away. Uh, now, got it. Hold her tight. Pull it in, no. hold him down, no. no cow. No. Yeah, that's right, no. we got him. Now you take a Brandon iron. My oh, okay. No!